what we're going to do now is something really unique that you can do with computers. You can learn a lot more without doing a ton of manual calculations. Here is the original data that we had for this problem. And if I'm going to go and refresh your memory and go over here to sheet two, I'm going to switch sheets. This is the original ANOVA test results that we got. All we did was we got a F critical of 2.86. That was what our F, uh, our F, not our F critical. That was our test statistic F, and it was larger than F crit. So we rejected that null hypothesis, right? Now let's go back over here. This is the original data. Here's a copy of the original data, but I created a little formula in here. I'm going to add a value, a constant value, to all of these dates here, or all of these ages. So for instance, if I add 5 up here and hit enter, notice that all of these increase by 5 compared to the original New York data. Now what do you think is happening when I add a constant number here? When I add a constant, let's say I add 10, that's a little easier to see. So 18 becomes 28, 19 becomes 29, 20 becomes 30. You see, all I'm doing is adding a constant number. So you see, I'm not changing the spread of this data. I'm not changing its standard deviation or its variance. It's still spread about its mean the same amount. But what I've done is I've shifted the mean up. See, if I change this to like something crazy like 25, that means the average age of people in New York is somewhere in the 40s. But I haven't changed how the data is spread compared to its sample mean. I've just simply biased it up, right? So since the null hypothesis, let me go down a little bit and show you this text I have down here I wrote. If we hold everything else constant and increase one of these sample means, right, that means the sum of squares among treatments is going to increase because the sum of squares among treatments is basically looking at these sample means and figuring out if any one of them have a significant variation compared to the grand mean, which would be all of them. So if I start increasing this number, I should be increasing SST, which increases F. So I should go way farther into the rejection region, which makes sense because one of these things is going to be grossly different than the other means. So let's go back and do something uh, a little innocuous at first. Let's just select the number 2. Now remember, the original data produced an F value of 2.86 and we compared that to 2.5. All we did now was increase all the ages by 2. And so what I'll do is I'll highlight everything and I'll go to data and I will select uh, data analysis, single factor ANOVA. And in here I'm going to select my data, which is the new data here. And I want to show you how it compares. Labels and alpha is 0.1, columns, everything is fine. Hit OK. And let me go and zoom in here. Let me go view, zoom. We'll make it 145 so you can see it a little bit better. Look what happened here. F is now 9.055. You can compare that with the original F, which was only 2.86. But notice, let me go back over to sheet here, the critical value stays the same at 2.51, 2.51. The critical value stays the same because the critical value is only basically related to the level of significance for our problem statement, which never changed, and also the degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom didn't change because I still had 10 samples in every state and I still had three populations. So all of that stayed the same. So the hurdle to jump over was the same. But because I increased the sample mean, in fact, you can look at New York, the average value is now 22.1, right? Texas and Oregon stay the same, but this average is clearly an outlier now, right? So whenever you look at the sum of squares among treatments, when you go back and look at your actual data here, which in this, uh, in Excel, it's called sum of squares between groups. Between groups means between populations. This number increased significantly. Compare that to before, it was only 24 whenever the data was the way it was, but now it's 76. Notice the sum of squares within groups is 113.4, exactly the same as before. Why? Because I didn't change the spread of the data. I just biased it up. But the spread compared to its mean was exactly the same. I just added a constant number to everything. Degrees of freedom remain the same. Uh, of course, MST change because I just take this number and divide by something and then of course F changes because it's the ratio of these two numbers but notice how basically changing and biasing up increased SST which increased MST and because this is a ratio of these two numbers it got bigger which pushed it even farther to the right into the rejection region. Notice the p-value is, is smaller because the p-value is just the area to the right of my of where my test statistic falls and of course if the test statistic is way farther to the right the p-value is going to be a much smaller area to the right. But the same thing holds. Basically, if p-value is less than 0.1, our alpha, we reject. Here, p-alpha is way less, p-value is way less than 0.1. So it's consistent. Either way you want to look at it, right? 
Now let's go back to sheet one and let's change this again. Let's change it to 10. Same thing, I just increased the average value even more, but I didn't change the spread of the data. It's standard deviation and all that stuff, or it's variance, is basically the same. It's, it's how much variance there is compared to its mean is basically the same, I just biased it up. So let's go ahead and highlight this. We'll go to data, we'll hit data analysis, single factor A, ANOVA, 0.1, everything's cool. Uh, I'll go ahead and do the input date range, or input data range here, and everything's the same. All right, so what happens here? Let me go ahead and do view, and we'll increase to 140. So you can see it a little bit better. Now what is F? F is 97. F critical stays exactly the same. That never changes when you change the data. It's only dependent on how many samples you have, how many populations you have, and also on alpha for your problem. But F is really, really big now. Originally, alpha was only 2.86. We increased things a little bit. It was 9. But now... Uh, our test statistic is 97. That means it is really far, way beyond F alpha, which uh, stayed the same at 2.51. You can also see the average value of the New York uh, ladies went way up. Um, the variance was 2.76. Notice the variance of that data was 2.76 when we changed it before, which is the same as it was initially, because when you add a constant value, you're not changing the spread of the data. You're just changing its average value. I think I've said this enough times. Uh, for you to know that basically the SST increased, none of these other numbers changed, and which increased MST, which increased F, which pushed everything farther to the right. And of course, you, if you go the other way, things will go back down. So remember this, because the next section I'm going to contrast it with something slightly different. Um, when you just increase the average value of one of those sample means, it increases the SST, the sum of squares between groups, which increases the test statistic, which makes it more and closer and closer to the, uh, when you hold everything else constant, closer and closer beyond it into that rejection region. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.